So next generation is right around the corner, and both PlayStation and Xbox are making their move. Let's first talk about PlayStation. They tweeted just this morning the following: Tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific, PlayStation 5 lead system architect Mark Cerny will provide a deep dive into PS5 system architecture and how it will shape the future of games. Watch tomorrow at PlayStation Blog. So keep an eye out for that. I'll be streaming this for sure, and I'll be really intrigued to see. How it holds up to Xbox Series X's specs, which, by the way, were revealed recently. But yeah, you can see that both companies are really just trying to get this information out there and get people hyped for the what is assumed to be like a November launch holiday 2020, unless the recent current events delays manufacturing and stuff. But for now, everything's still on track for holiday 2020. So let's move on to Xbox, who yesterday morning tweeted out the following: "Are you ready for the fastest, most powerful console, most powerful Xbox console ever? Take a look at the next-gen tech inside Xbox Series X." And then they provide two links: one that gives you a basic rundown, and then one that gives you a more detailed rundown. So here is the basic rundown. Scrolling down, you can see how Xbox Series X was engineered. You can see how all of the different components fits inside the box. Pretty clever, and I personally. Personally, like the minimalistic, monolithic look of this hardware, and they've got this like dual motherboard setup here, which is really interesting, and a lot of cooling options for this powerful chip right here. Scrolling further down, you'll find details about Xbox's velocity architecture. It reads right here that this architecture unlocks new speed and performance capabilities through the groundbreaking combination of hardware, a custom one terabyte solid state drive, and CPU and deep software integration. And then here are some videos showing off two particular features. So right here on the left, we have gamers will experience more time playing and less time waiting as loading times will be greatly decreased thanks to the processing power of Xbox Series. Series X. So on the left here is Xbox One X. This is Xbox Series X, and you can see the two loading times kind of side by side in action, which、uh, will reveal that yeah, loading times are vastly improved, and it goes without saying when you have solid state drives involved. But、uh, with Xbox Series X, we've got a custom solid state drive specifically built for this console. So right here takes you know a couple seconds probably to load this. So boom, just like that, it's already loaded in, and then the game on the left here,、uh, yeah, I'm assuming we're gonna have to wait the whole length of this for that to complete. Let's、uh, fast forward a little bit. Is it still? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> okay, I've not played this game on、um, Xbox One X, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming、uh, this is accurate to what people have experienced. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. And then on the right here, a new feature powered by the technical capabilities and the innovative Xbox Velocity architecture and Xbox Series X Quick Resume enables players to seamlessly switch between multiple titles and resumes instantly from where you last left off. So the power of Xbox Series X allows this console to suspend multiple titles and kind of keep them at bay in the background, so that when players want to switch between these games, they can do so on the fly. And an example of that can be seen. Right here, and this is definitely a very cool feature. You know, I, I switch around between playing multiple games a lot, and to be able to just like kind of flip back and forth so seamlessly is, I think, a really cool feature. So here's Forza, right? The dude's playing for a bit. He pauses, goes to another game that he had previously booted up. So this is Ori and the Blind Forest, and it takes a couple seconds. But it does eventually get there. I believe this is up to. They haven't specified how many games. Can be booted up at the same time. How many games can be suspended at the same time? But、uh, we see this guy do this across like five games or so. So maybe that's the maximum. Either way, pretty impressive and pretty convenient stuff. Then scrolling down, we have some specs: 12 teraflops of power, true 4K and 8K ready. I don't get the point of 8K at this point, but you know it's there, I guess. Up to 120 frames per second. That to me is. Way more interesting, and one terabyte custom solid state drive, so on and so forth. Here's some information about the cooling solution,、uh, split motherboard that is pretty unique to consoles, and heatsink chassis, vapor chamber, and more cooling information. Let's now talk about the more detailed article on what we can expect for 
Xbox Series X. It reads right here, it's not just about making games look better though, it's about making games play better too. So they really emphasize the 120 frames per second and it's something that I hope a lot of developers will leverage. I'd rather have 2K graphics at 120 FPS than 4K at 60 or 30, you know what I mean? You know, once you go 120 frames per second, like once you go past that 60 threshold, like there's no going back. You can feel the difference. Like it, you can just sense how smooth it is to play a game at 120 frames. And then here are more details on the uh, components of the Xbox Series X powered by an 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU and an RDNA 2 class GPU pretty modern chipsets. Obviously, if you have invested thousands of dollars on a gaming PC, then you know, you're going to far surpass this stuff. But compared to what most people have right now, like this hardware is pretty impressive and does keep up with uh, the hardware of current year. So this is good. And you know, five years from now, obviously, this hardware will become older. But given what happened with PS4 and you know, PS4 Pro, Xbox and Xbox One X, uh, you know, this iterative type of uh, console generation is going to be commonplace, I think. And so we're going to see these console manufacturers try to keep up with the times with these new iterations and create multiple versions of games that tailor to the different consoles. And here are even more specific specifications. So it reads right here, 8 cores, 3.8 gigahertz with uh, 3.6 gigahertz simultaneous multi-threading customs and to CPU. The GPU is 12 teraflops, 1.825 gigahertz custom RDNA 2 GPU. Generally, from what I've heard from people who are familiar with all of these numbers and specs, they all seem to be pretty impressed by what this hardware houses. Uh, and then, you know, 7 nanometers enhanced process uh, memory, 16 gigabytes GDDR6 with 320-bit uh, bus. Then here we have some information on the uh, internal storage, 1 terabyte custom NVMe solid-state drive, I.O. throughput, so, you know, data rate transfers of 2.4 uh, gigabytes per second raw and 4.8 gigabytes per second compressed with custom hardware decompression block, expandable storage of 1 terabyte expansion card, that's a topic I'll get to in a bit. Uh, memory cards uh, are coming back in some shape, and this is a custom-made solid-state memory expansion. There's actually a proprietary solution to Xbox Series X, and I suspect that PlayStation 5 will probably do something similar. And then you can also have an external storage with a USB 3.2 external HDD support, which is likely for, you know, like, previous gen titles or to store media and stuff like that but I think to play Xbox Series X games and to have those load at the speed that you want you're gonna have to put those games in either the internal um, one terabyte memory or in this expandable one terabyte expansion card and I'm assuming these expansion cards will come in greater sizes down the line as well two terabyte three terabyte I, I don't think one terabyte is enough I'm kind of disappointed that it doesn't ship with two terabytes but I guess they're also trying to keep the cost down. And finally, we have optical drive, 4K UHD Blu-ray drive, and a performance target of 4K 60 or up to 120 FPS. And then here are some details about the implementation of DirectX ray tracing, and this is hardware accelerated ray tracing that allows for just more realistic lighting. They show this through Minecraft of all games, but I guess the simplicity of Minecraft's graphics allow you to see the difference much more clearly. So here's ray tracing off, and then here's ray tracing on, and you can see some really interesting lighting effects and reflections going on here, which kind of makes this scene look a bit more, you know, realistic and immersive, I suppose. Scrolling further down, here's a screenshot of Gears of War 5. Here is uh, Xbox One X and then Xbox Series X, where the lighting is a little more realistic. You know, the lighting uh, kind of uh, reacts more naturally in, in the way it would in real life. And then it reads right here, technical demo of Gears 5 powered by Unreal Engine for Xbox Series X using the full PC Ultra spec settings. 50% higher particle count than the PC Ultra specs allowed. So they've actually added new features that go beyond the graphics of the PC version to show off just how powerful this console is. And unlike the Xbox One X version on Series X, they've managed to get this game up and running to uh, 4K 60 frames per second. Uh, they've also talked about how low times for this game 
Game are, are much faster now. And the team behind this next-gen upgrade has even gone as far as making the game already run at over 100 frames per second. And they're trying to implement 120 frames per second gameplay for multiplayer modes. And what's really impressive about this is that the team was apparently able to get this up and running in a matter of weeks. So imagine what they can accomplish when they really have the time to sit down and take, you know, a couple months to really optimize a game for Xbox Series X. The fact that they could achieve this much in a short amount of time frame indicates that, you know, it's pretty easy to optimize for Xbox Series X, which is pretty good news. And the cherry on top to all this is that Xbox Series X is employing their smart delivery feature that allows players to purchase one version of a game and get both the Xbox One X version and the Xbox Series X version, the upgraded version. You won't have to pay separately for that. And uh, that's also something that CD Projekt Red is participating in with Microsoft with Cyberpunk 2077. They're going to have a next gen upgrade that will just be free for anyone to get for those who already own the Xbox One X version. Very consumer friendly and I'm glad that this is something that's just going to be done across all Xbox first party titles. And then here's more talk of solid state drive, the velocity architecture, tight integration between hardware and software, uh, allowing 100 gigabytes of game assets to be instantly accessible by the developer and that's just kind of going to change the landscape of how developers can conceptualize certain types of games, particularly open worlds. And this is relayed by um, Andrew Goosen, technical fellow on Xbox Series X. He said the CPU is the brain of our console and the GPU is the heart, but the Xbox Velocity architecture is the soul. The Xbox Velocity architecture is about so much more than fast loading times. It's one of the most innovative parts of our consoles. It's about revolutionizing how games can create vastly bigger, more compelling worlds. And it's specifically highlighted that open world games in particular will benefit from this. So titles like Final Fantasy 15, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Red Dead Redemption 2, you name it. A lot of these games have to employ certain tricks, certain illusions to make it seem like things are seamless and open world. And there's only so much of that open world that can actually render in real time. But with this implementation, with this next gen technology, open world games will greatly benefit and it'll allow developers to do just even bigger, bolder and crazier things within open worlds. So that kind of stuff opens up like legit new game design elements and it'll be interesting to see how developers utilize this to their advantage. There's also discussion about latency and how they've found ways to ensure that when you input a command in the controller, you know, the milliseconds between the command input and what happens on screen is significantly reduced. And there's more details here of the quick resume technology that allows you to suspend games. What's really interesting about this is that you can actually suspend games and keep them suspended even if the console is turned off, not in sleep mode, but completely turned off. It reads right here, since game states will be stored directly in the system's solid state drive, they'll even persist after you turn off the console, unplug it entirely, or even take a system update. One of the testers on the team unplugged his console for a week, then took an update, and was still able to continue right where he left off without so much as a loading screen. That's pretty damn cool. Last but not least, another major feature they're emphasizing is backwards compatibility, which is something that Xbox One employed, but they're taking that even further. They say right here, thousands of games on Xbox One, including Xbox 360 and original Xbox games, will play even better on Xbox Series X. So it's not just like they're just emulating the old versions of the games and that's that. They're actually enhancing these old versions of games so they load faster, look better. It reads right here, players will see the benefits of the improved hardware of Xbox Series Series X for backwards compatible games, including improved boot and load times, more stable frame rates, higher resolutions, and improved image quality. So as far as this in-depth article goes, those are the details that were conveyed. To finish things off, here's a video from Austin Evans, who got an exclusive sort of hands-on experience with Xbox Series X with the Microsoft team, and he showed off a couple things. So first of all, here is another example of what Minecraft looks like with um, ray tracing turned off versus on. So right here is turned off. And then you will well, see that when he turns it on, there's a big difference of the lighting reacting and the way it interacts with like this glass material. And you can see the reflections on the ground here with the kind of this cascading rainbow like effect. Pretty interesting and pretty cool stuff. Uh, next up, we have uh, just a sample of Gears 5 gameplay running on Xbox Series X, though, uh, you know, with YouTube's compressed um, video footage, it probably won't look too different. But you know, with uh, ray tracing on, the lighting is expected to be a lot more realistic. 
And then that brings us to the memory card solid state drive thing that is proprietary to Xbox Series X. This is detailed by Austin Evans right here. But if you want more than one terabyte of space on your Series X, you're gonna want one of these guys. So this is a little Seagate expansion module. So there actually were some rumors beforehand about this little mystery port here, which they very, uh, very cleverly not shown until this point. And essentially that means that you can expand with another SSD right into the back of the system. So I know it looks like a memory card, but this is actually a full one terabyte SSD, which essentially gives you the exact same performance of your standard SSD. And of course you can imagine with that expansion port on the back, maybe larger capacities, maybe you could own a couple of these. We'll see how expensive they are to be fair. So so that's the basic rundown of that. And the reason they have to do a proprietary solid state drive is because they have specifically designed these solid state drives to interact with this specific CPU and hardware configuration. And so to ensure that these games have the best loading speeds possible and it, you know everything's uniform, they kind of have to go with these proprietary drives. Now, unlike like a PlayStation Vita, which didn't come with, I don't think it came with any memory inside and you had to buy a proprietary memory card separately, uh, the Xbox Series X does at least come with one terabyte already from the outset. So, you know, a decent amount of memory, even if I would have preferred two terabytes. But at the same time, yeah, I'm wondering what the cost of these uh, memory card or SSD expansions will be and whether the proprietary nature will have an adverse effect on uh, people's uh, ability to expand memory storage at a reasonable cost. I think it'll come down to price point and I hope they keep that as low as possible. Austin Evans also briefly delves into the Xbox Series X controller, which is very similar to the Xbox One X controller or the Xbox One controller with a couple of enhancements here and there, a couple of tweaks. Uh, it is a bit disappointing that they're still going with AA batteries instead of just implementing rechargeable batteries that you can just, you know, plug into uh, via USB. But at the same time, uh, these uh, batteries are bound to last quite a while. Uh, the Xbox controller is known for its long battery life. So hopefully that's something that will carry through. And you can always use rechargeable AA batteries that are pretty affordable in this day and age. But it would have just been a little more convenient to have that integrated within the controller. But I guess the philosophy that they're going for here is, you know, why fix what ain't broken? And yeah, you know, I'm happy with the Xbox One controller and to see them just like iterate on that here and there. And something else that Austin Evans confirmed is that this Xbox Series X controller will be backwards compatible, so you can use it with Xbox One X or just the regular Xbox One, which is neat. Last but not least, Austin Evans talked about HDR and how games that weren't originally built with HDR in mind can have that feature implemented very easily with the way Microsoft set things up with Xbox Series X. And you can see right here like a heat map of how HDR is functioning with this type right here halo you get a lot so uh here. yeah and this is a heat map so essentially all this is doing is just showing us based on the color where we're really getting that extra brightness and that extra range that of course was never designed and yeah the fact that they can just implement this so quickly uh again just shows that microsoft is going for a lot of easily optimizable features and elements so that ports can be done very quickly upgrades can be done very quickly and features like hdr can be layered on top very easily. So yeah, this is kind of a big blowout for Xbox Series X, and it looks like Microsoft is looking for new avenues to get the information out there, given that uh, E3 was canceled. And now PlayStation is up next, and I'm interested to see how they fare, you know, what kind of architecture they have and how it will compare to Xbox and what sort of features they'll announce that will wow people. Uh, I'll be streaming that, so look forward to that. In the meantime, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the Xbox Series X, all the specs and features revealed about it. Drop a comment below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.